Podcast. It's Benny One, and I'm back at you with another Star Wars movie review. And we are on Star Wars Episode 3 Revenge of the Sith, everybody. This came out in 2005. I remember going to the midnight premiere of this. I was in high school and I didn't care. I still went to the midnight premiere and I went to school the next day and I was dog ass tired. And it was all worth it, everybody, because this is what this trilogy was building towards. And getting to see Anakin become Darth Vader, the fall of the Republic, Palpatine taking over, becoming the Emperor. It was the whole point of this prequel trilogy. And for the most part, I would say that this third movie pretty much landed it and nailed it. They, it it's, it's still a flawed movie. It still has the flaws that the previous two movies did. But overall, I do think it is the best one in this prequel trilogy like i quite a bit actually so what i love about this movie is there are a lot of scenes in this movie that go very dark places very very dark places very emotional places like the or especially the order 66 scene where uh palpatine gets on and he tells you know, the Clone Troopers, Order 66, which we find out in the Clone Wars animated show, was him triggering an inhibitor chip in all the clones' brains to kill all the Jedi that they were out fighting the Clone War with for years. They were fighting side by side with them. So he tells them to do the Order 66 thing, and man, it is emotional. I remember the first time I saw it, it actually made me like tear up. It was very dark. It was very sad. And it just, like, you felt betrayal in this movie. It, it was crazy. That Order 66 thing is probably one of the darkest, if not the darkest thing that has been in any Star Wars movie, man. It's crazy. And that's why when people say the prequel movies are horrible and some of the worst shit that has been in star wars i can see that but at the same time there's some stuff in these prequel movies that is some of the best shit that has also happened in the star wars franchise too like the order 66 thing very dark very very dark as quirky and funny and lighthearted as this prequel trilogy was this third movie goes there it goes dark and from time to time there's the scene where uh, Anakin goes to see Palpatine when he's at like this crazy, I don't know, it's like an opera house type thing, uh, but in the Star Wars universe. And he he sits down and you can really see in this movie um, Palpatine like really digging into Anakin after he kills Dooku in the very beginning because we get a rescue mission with uh, Obi-Wan and Anakin to go save the Chancellor from Dooku and general grievous which we'll get to general grievous and there's this scene though where palpatine tells him have you ever heard of this story about darth plagueis the wise which was palpatine's master he doesn't come out and say it but you most definitely can tell that it was palpatine's master because he talks about how he was so arrogant and that he gained all this power and he learned how to stop people from dying except for uh himself and Basically, Palpatine tells this story about how his apprentice killed him in his sleep, and you can tell that it was Palpatine. <laughs> like, dark shit, man. That scene, one of my favorite scenes in Star Wars. Anything. Great scene. Um, so yeah, there's lots of great action in this movie. Like I said, the opening sequence, we get this rescue mission with Obi-Wan and Anakin. It's super entertaining. I love the visuals of it, like when Anakin and Obi-Wan's um, Jedi starfighters are cruising along and then all of a sudden they just nosedive off the side of a freaking starship and the camera goes right along with the ride. Awesome visual. I love that stuff. And I love the relationship that Obi-Wan and Anakin have in this movie. You can tell that they just, they're brothers now. Like they are a master and an apprentice, but they're brothers and they have this brother relationship going on now. So then 
when the end of the movie comes around and Anakin does turn to the dark side, you get that betrayal and it just it has more impact to it because of the relationship that they have and it, it it's it just it sucks like it does it you just and you knew it was gonna happen but it the this movie really hit the emotional side of things and that's what I think this movie needed to do and I felt like it for the most part it accomplished it now like I said there are things in the movie that resemble the bad parts of the other two movie like some of the dialogue um Padme I do not like what they did with her character in this movie I get she had to become pregnant I get that that's not my issues with it but like her dialogue in this movie and she loses the will to live in this movie by the end of the movie after Anakin turns to the dark side becomes Darth Vader they have this cool sequence where they're showing Anakin get literally turned into Darth Vader they're putting the limb the robotic stuff on him the suit and everything and then at the same time they're going back and forth and they're showing Padme giving birth to Leia and Luke it was a cool scene except for the way that they both ended you get the epic Darth Vader thing where he's like no mm, cringe they could have picked um something a little better with that <laughs> um and then Padme just they're like we don't know why but she's just lost the will to live and she's just dies because she lost the will to live i you guys could have come up with something a little bit better than that like because anakin right before obi-wan and him were fighting he's force choking her and everything and like he could have like injured her or something and that's what maybe caused her to die after she gave birth to them but that, that she lost the will to live come on george i know you wrote all these movies he wrote the prequel movies he like was in full charge of these prequel movies bro and like i know you can do better than that man the lightsaber fight between obi-wan and anakin yes it's super choreographed but you know what it's awesome it was what everybody was waiting for I loved it. I thought it was great. It's one of the best lightsaber fights in any Star Wars movie. It's It was great. It was great to see two awesome, badass Jedi Knights going at it with each other who were brothers, friends. It, it was great. It paid off. The whole, and the last, like, freaking hour of this movie, complete payoff, in my opinion. Like, when Anakin storms the Jedi Temple... That's what I'm talking about. This movie dark. They show Anakin going into the freaking the master room where all the Jedi masters sit, their council room, and there's kids in there. There's younglings in there, and the ones like Master Skywalker, what are we gonna do? And Anakin turns his lightsaber on. They don't show him killing those kids, but they most definitely are like Anakin killed those kids. And I was like, God damn! Like this movie goes dark, like dark the darkest any star wars movie has ever went and it's one of the prequel movies too that's why i'm like people don't give especially this movie they don't give episode three enough love because it, it goes dark so but yeah overall guys this movie is just loaded with payoff i think it with what the prequel trilogy was trying to accomplish i do think this third movie paid off the general grievous stuff I, I always didn't, until the Clone Wars show came out, I felt like the General Grievous thing, I was just like, okay, so George just wanted to throw this mostly robotic alien thing with four arms and he's been stealing Jedi's lightsabers that he's been killing just for them to fight something cool looking like. But it, then the Clone Wars show came out and you, his character got majorly flushed out. So... So the, the general Grievous stuff in the movie didn't make a whole lot of sense to me at the time. But after you watch the Clone Wars and everything, it makes way more sense. His character is totally flushed out. Uh, Dooku gets killed right off the bat. Um, Anakin kills him. And I enjoy the pa uh, Palpatine like turning Anakin to the dark side. Even though I will say that the whole motives for him turning to the dark side are kind of weird... Because it seems like by the end of the movie, he doesn't actually believe in the dark side or the freaking the Empire or something like that. 
he literally is just doing it because he wants to learn how to say Padme. Like, that's literally it. Which I can see how it would be enough to make him want to turn to the dark side to learn that. But, like, he didn't seem like he was very interested at all in actually joining the dark side. It was literally just to say Padme. So, so he got duped, basically. Like, completely duped by Palpatine. And Palpatine had him, man. He freaking... You could tell he had him. I think he knew he had him in the second movie completely. So, But overall, great way to end this trilogy of mixed movies. Because um, I think the second one is one of the weakest Star Wars movie. The first one, I think, was good. It was decent. And I do think this third one actually had a lot of good payoff. And as far as this prequel storyline that leads us into the original trilogy, I think they did a really good job tying things into A New Hope. So I'm going to give Episode 3, Revenge of the Sith, an 8 out of 10, everybody. So I hope you guys enjoyed the review. Thanks for watching, and I'll be catching you on the tube laters because I have spoken.